Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We made it, guys. We made it past the whole week. It is Friday, a beautiful Friday. Hope you guys are out having drinks tonight, you know, or, you know, I'm just kidding. No, I, you know, I don't condone, you know, drinking, you know, because I want to be a good boy. No, I'm just kidding. You know, you can have a couple, you know, have fun. Maybe you can have a couple, grab your favorite snack and watch the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast because we have an amazing show lined up for you today. Today, I have two special guests. I have my boy Nelson from the GSMC Basketball Podcast and my boy Christopher from the Fantasy Sports Podcast, uh, you know, GSMC. Uh, for, so we're going to talk, we're going to dig into a uh, WWE SmackDown preview. We're also going to jump into Becky Lynch potentially holding off for, uh, you know, for a contract. So we're going to kind of go through um, like in terms of like sports entertainment athletes that have kind of done this ultimately to, um, you know, get the better part of the deal, which you kind of have to do as an athlete. But we'll get into that a little later. Our third segment, we're going to talk about our Thursday night wrestling review where we get into the we we dive into the ring of uh, ring of honor impact, uh, total impact, uh, nonstop action wrestling and a little bit of the N- uh, National Wrestling Alliance as well. Um, fourth segment, we're going to talk about my uh, my WWE Tag Team World Cup. I bring in tag teams from all generations, the 70s, 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s, you name it. Is your favorite tag team going to be on this list? Check out the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast. Make sure you stay for that. And the fifth and final segment, something I do every Friday, is my Wrestling News Roundup. Obviously, want to, you know, give you guys, you know, some cool wrestling factoids to head into any conversation. You know, some guy might, like, you know, come by and be like, hey, like, let's talk about wrestling. And he'd be like, dude, I don't know about wrestling. But then be like, hey, I listened to that weird guy on the GSMC Sports Network. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, but before we move on any forward, I want to remind you guys to use the tips and donations link at the gsmcpodcast.net. Uh, with your questions, just put your questions on my top so I can see it. A nice little back and forth conversation. Definitely love hearing feedback from the fans. The podcast is a way better with fan interaction. You know, of course, if you want to, you know, make sure you like and subscribe to the show. If you want to keep seeing this handsome mug all over your uh, YouTube computer screens, maybe on Instagram, TikTok, wherever, Some multiple social media platforms out there, you know, just so you can see me. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, you know. But so let's go ahead and dig on to this. Hopefully I did this right. All right. So far, it seems pretty Gucci uh, so far. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and dig right on into it. Uh, so our first segment, we are going to talk about. Yes, it worked. The WWE SmackDown preview. So WWE SmackDown, it's a fallout of what happened at the King and Queen of the Ring in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we are live from, well, not live because it taped on the East Coast already. Uh, But I swear to God, I have not checked TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. So I am as genuine as you are. I have it taped. I have it recorded. Can't wait to get into this. It's going to be sending some shorts about my reactions, about the matches and all the promos and all the storyline change-ups. Can't wait to get into that. Um, So we're going to get into Nia Jax's coronation, her celebration, new queen of the ring. Obviously, her dominance was pretty darn great. The victory, you know, we're also going to get into the victory over Logan Paul. Uh, Cody Rhodes tries to, you know, he's going to find out who's going to face in Glasgow, Scotland at Clash at the Castle. Piper Niven also is going to attack, uh, you know, if, will she continue her attack uh, on Bailey? I'm not too sure. Um, a question that I kind of got for these guys, we'll go with Nelson first. Um, have you personally, have you been a, like ever kind of, well, I know you went to WrestleMania, so I, that's, you know, that's kind of a bad question. But, you know, I guess I kind of just want to reiterate how the, you know, how the, you know, how the, just the aroma around, you know, going to a WWE live event, kind of, you know, what it entails. It's a bunch of people making loud noises. Like, there's just screaming everywhere. Just everyone screaming. It's a great environment. Like, there's just lights everywhere. Like, you can, you can feel the atmosphere. It's fantastic. And I'll move over to Chris. Chris, um, have you had any uh, personal experiences with wrestling? No, I'm on the completely opposite end of the spectrum as you guys. Wrestling is not one of my fortes. I'm mean, like still stuck in like watching old clips of like Stone Cold Steve Austin, that kind of guy. So, now we're talking. So, but I'm ultimately so excited to be on the show. Super hyped to talk about a sport that's kind of unfamiliar to me. Obviously, I'm in good hands with you guys, so should be a great segment. 
We'll do it 110 percent so we're also going to go through uh you know who will challenge the next powerhouse the wwe women's tag team champions uh bianca belair and uh, jade cargo obviously had zoe stark and Shayna baszler uh, win in a number one contenders match on wwe raw we're also going to get a lot of uh, the bloodline the bloodline tag team of to uh, tama tonga and tongaloa the samoan brothers finally making their first appearance in the WWE squared circle, they're going to fight the Street Profits. And, um, you know, just a little controversy surrounding the bloodline. Right now, you kind of have Paul Heyman, which is the wise man. Essentially, kind of the manager, the coach, the GM, however you want to kind of phrase it. Um, so, it seems like right now, the, the, the bloodline's in disarray. And this kind of makes me think about how coaches, you know, how teams in the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, you know, whatever, whatever. How... Uh, we'll start with Chris. How important is it to have a coach that you can rely on and, you know, basically kind of steer your team the right way? Oh, it's massive. We see it so many times. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of both the NBA, the NHL, and even I'm going to bring in soccer here. Having the proper person to head your team, head whatever you're doing is so vital. And Obviously, in wrestling, it's kind of different because wrestling can be managed in so many different ways. We see yeah. it with, you know, how these uh, wrestlers kind of uh, manage their fights, who they want to call out next. That's the beauty of wrestling, you know, the call out, you know, to see who is going to be the next exciting matchup to look out for. And so you make a fantastic point that whenever uh, you want to set up something big and massive like a wrestling event whether it be a soccer match or a basketball game it's always important to have the proper person to head that right and nelson right so obviously like having um a coach and having that um person to um like write something up when like the going gets tough like you know how it is like you are a spurs fan and you do you oh, talk about right. how greg popovich is like one of the like he is a good coach and he was part of the reason why the spurs was were so good in um the past and why they were so good with tim duncan and tony parker and mm -hmm. ginobili and all of those players and like you sort of understand like the importance of having like a coach like that to sort of guide those players and into the success that they had right exactly um so yeah a fun fact about tonight in albany new york it also hosted the wwf no mercy pay-per-view in 2000 where you saw the rock you saw the undertaker and so cold it kind of reminded me and this is you know this was this event was kind of a big deal because it kind of you know kind of generated and kind of propelled the idea of um you know kind of like a video games kind of thing like then like obviously there's the wrestlemania 2000 on the nintendo 64 uh the wwf no mercy uh on nintendo 64 64 as well and it, it's kind of crazy how like things come you know full swing a lot of people think that like you know you're not a wrestling fan but sometimes you have a high influence of wrestling and sometimes video games could impact you know the future wrestling in terms of like you know now you have wwe games super mainstream you know people pay like 60 70 80 dollars for these freaking things like it's insane like did any of you guys play nintendo 64 i know you guys are a little on the young side but do you get have you guys ever played n64 we'll start with nelson I mean, like, I've played on the console, but I have not, like, played that game specifically. Like, What was your favorite so, game? Uh, there was... I Oh, my God, that was so young. I um, oh. I don't remember that one. I, I, I don't remember anyone on the top of my head, but, like, I was so young. How about you, Chris? Did you dig into Nintendo 64 growing up? No, nah, I'm actually not a, a huge video game person, but, like... I can understand the nostalgia of a classic video game console. Obviously, you're a bit older than us, so you obviously have that uh, intelligence in terms of <laughs> video games and different consoles. So it's exciting to hear about that game specifically. But no, I'm sorry, I'm not a big video game kind of guy. <laughs> it's all good, my man. It was just, it's so crazy how the game was just influential in terms of uh, the Midway games. Obviously, you had Mortal Kombat, you had Tekken. You had Street Fighter, and you also had the NBA Jam series. So the games, I don't know. It's just kind of cool how that all kind of goes, uh, you know, kind of full circle. So, uh, you know, that was it for um, our segment on uh, WWE SmackDown preview. We're going to move on into our next segment about Becky Lynch's contract. So, hey, don't go anywhere. 